Welcome to another episode of Viatorian Voices, Conversations on the Way. This episode is another roundtable on the way, a more in-depth feature to explore things a little further than we can squeeze into the usual 15 minutes. For this installment, we have a special dialogue we're calling Viatorians, Past, Present, and Future. This roundtable is a one-on-one -on -one conversation between two Viatorians who entered the community at very different times and have served in Viatorian religious life in different varied roles, but who nonetheless share their deep Viatorian character and vitality, which shows through in this unique conversation. Brother John Eustace steers the conversation here with Father Patrick Render. Brother John, who has appeared on this podcast in a few places, is the Director of Vocation Ministry and is currently studying theology and preparing for ordination. Since Father Pat is a new voice in this podcast feed, here's a proper introduction. Father Patrick Render CSV first met the Viatorians when he was a student at the former Spalding Institute in his native Peoria. He entered the community after graduation in 1959 and professed his first vows in 1960. While in the community, Father Render completed his undergraduate degree at Loyola University before pursuing graduate work at Catholic University of America, Northern Illinois University, and the University of North Carolina in Charlotte. His first assignment back in 1968 was Dean of Men and Religion Teacher at St. Vider High School in Arlington Heights. Father Render would remain there for 15 years, ultimately helping to lead the school as principal and president. Later, he was elected Provincial Superior, a role he held for two terms or eight years. Next, Father Render was pastor of St. Joseph Church in Springfield for seven years, St. Thomas More in Henderson, Nevada for 14 years, and then at St. Vider Parish in Chicago for six years. Father Render has continued to serve as a leader among the Viatorians with the Viatorian Community Council, regional committees, and as a novice director. He is now the coordinator of association and lives as a priest in residence at St. Patrick Parish in Kankakee, Illinois. I'm Dan Masterton from Viatorian Vocation Ministry, and it's my pleasure to produce this episode for you. Let's get right into this great conversation. The first voice you'll hear is Brother John, followed by Father Pat offering his first reply. Enjoy. As a person who's been a Viatorian for a few years, yes. Um, <laughs> As Viatorians and from your experience, what do you say is something that's unique about us and something that we really have to offer people, to offer the world, to offer the church? Very often I hear back from people, the, um, especially when I was in parish work, uh, the reaction that um, you, you all must have been teachers. You, your education background shows through in everything you do, you know. Uh, it shows in your in your homilies. It shows in your relationship with people. It shows in the way you interact with people. Your comfort level with people. Um, your your you you have a respect for the for the people you're talking to. They often say, you know, it's not like we're we feel like we're being lectured, but rather you're talking with us. And so there's this teacher that relationship, teacher student, teacher learner, teacher dialogue with with people. And can you point to those questions or those observations that people have about Viatorians being relatable? Can you point to an instance or two where you can say, yes, that is true, and here it is? Well, I certainly heard it when we were, when Viatorians were leaving and withdrawing from several of our parishes. One of the things that people lamented the most was that they really have appreciated that piece of what we brought to parish ministry as pastors, as associate pastors, as principals, um, that they, they don't find that necessarily in other leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they find it heavily in us and, and lament that as one of the things they're going to miss. So in your own experience of being a teacher, being a principal, being a pastor, being in leadership in the community, what are some of the unique things that you have brought forward that you would say, this was Viatorian as I brought it into how I approached ministry or how I walked with people? Building up communities. Um, one of the things that people identify often with us is the spirit of community that we create and that they experience in our schools or in our parishes. Year after year, I hear that many times 
Um, there's a there's a real sense of welcome and hospitality and of community here. We all, even though it's a big parish, you feel like you belong. You feel like you're connected. You know, you feel like something has happened. So I think that that dimension of what our mission or how we speak of our mission, even maybe unconsciously, um, we go all about that. And I noticed it in my work with diocesan priests. I was the dean out in Las Vegas uh, for about nine years. And people would say to me, you, you, you run these meetings differently. Uh, it's different in this deanery. You, you guys create a different kind of atmosphere or something in this deanery. Um, it's inclusive. Uh, it, it involves other people. It's respectful. Um, it's more of a sharing than it is an agenda. Uh, and so the, the building of community, I think, is really one of the characteristics that I think is, is very visible and very evident from us. So I was just thinking we're you and I sitting here at this table talking together, we have a, a shared location of uh, Viatorian ministry. However, you were a Viatorian minister in the place, St. Thomas More in Henderson, right. Nevada. And I was a young person growing up in that parish, although our times didn't cross over uh, when I was parishioner there and you were pastor. However, uh, there, there is a connection that, that we have there. How would you relate the viatorianness of relating with families who are in a parish, St. Thomas More or St. Joe's in Springfield, or what do we as viatorians uniquely bring into a family life or into a parish life that has young people and families? I think in a kind of a transparent sense of humanity, mm. of our own humanness, Many of us have, have, you know, become close family friends with lots of families in parishes and in schools where we've, where we've been, you know, we get invited into their homes, we get be, do their baptisms, we do their weddings, we do their funerals. Um, and it becomes both personal friendship for us, but what people seem to experience and, ex and appreciate the most is you're very relatable. You're, you're very easy to be with you know, welcoming you to dinner. We don't have to set a special table. You know, you're just welcome to join the family at our table. And so they find that humanity, that kind of ability to be relaxed and to be people and not to be in roles necessarily. I mean, you're always in a role, you know, if you're the pastor and you're invited to somebody's house for a Super Bowl party, you're still Father Pat, you know, you're still so, and everybody knows that and kind of treats you in that way. But, but there is a lot of, uh, back and forth. And I think that 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 also affects ways that that I've seen in um, well, for example, in most of our parishes, we we try to develop parish councils, pastoral councils, or finance councils, or leadership teams uh, among people. and they they always will say that, you guys do this differently. you 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 show a genuine respect and interest in us and our opinions, our lives, our backgrounds that kind of thing uh and so it it's it's not a conscious effort on our part it kind of it's in the genes it's, yeah we we live it we breathe it yeah. it's in our bones yeah it's, exactly um, in exactly. my experience at saint thomas more as a as a kid growing up there first was youth ministry well they did youth group nights yeah uh but that was instigated by parishioners uh, who went to the pastor to say hey we really need to do this and the pastor said, of course, go. And then it developed into a robust program. Uh, for a while, it was like teen. Uh, eventually, when I was in college, I volunteered and I was a, a core team member. And that's where it, it whet my appetite to work in youth ministry and eventually uh, getting me connected with the Viatorians. And then it was as I was joining the Viatorians, you came there. What was right. your experience of that youth piece? Oh, it was wonderful. It was magnificent. Um, it was the strongest, most vital, viable youth ministry program I've ever seen. There, were, there was some caution, I think, about Life Teen because it had a reputation, it had an image a little bit. But I found that the people who were doing youth ministry at our place were very aware of that and very conscious of translating it and, and transforming it in some way to meet the needs of the kids. The years that I were there, Ken Rosania, started you know he was the youth minister for a number of years 
Uh, and then uh, his associate was Amanda Dwyer, who had grown up in the parish and been part of Life Team. And he hired her as his associate. And um, in subsequent years, I married her and her husband. And then as a team, I was there at that wedding. When, yes. the, when Ken was uh, no longer doing that ministry, her husband, Steve and Amanda took over as a couple and led the youth ministry program for the whole, the whole time I was there and even beyond for a couple of years. And it was, it was remarkable. It was, it was one of the most dynamic parts of the parish. But I would add the, the, the preface to, to youth, to the life team was more youth. And that's junior high. And Dorothy, the lady who ran that and her core team were magnificent with kids. And it was the most well thought of, thought out program of combining both the catechetical side of it and the, the experiential uh, side of it for young people. And it engaged parents with kids in the, in the whole process. And, and it, was, um, it was a wonderful program. Uh, and and it, the two of those things together in terms of the parish's ministry to young people was outstanding. Unfortunately, it kind of, um, I think we always said, you know, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. That we really need to look at young couples, young couples who are preparing for marriage and young couples newly married and how to engage them somehow in a, in a meaningful kind of connection to the parish and that's kind of yet to be developed and i think that's a, a church issue yeah, too it is. that it hopefully is. we as viatorians can say here's here's what we have to offer here's our unique uh, flavor to that that's right but it's a captive audience you know i think young young couples who come to get prepared in a merit for marriage in a parish uh, are really open so to listening, to receiving, to hearing, to talking, if the relationship is good with the priest or the, the, the minister who's working with them. Um, and so that when the wedding day is finished, they're still very affectionately tied to that community. Mm -hmm. and, and you could really develop something from that. Do you have questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I know the story of how you and Ryan... Uh, <laughs> sort of came to the Vitorians and how he left and you went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but from your from what you recall in those days at that point in your life, what was it that made you want to come and be a part of it? Yeah, so I was involved with youth ministry at St. Thomas More with a good group of friends, uh, the the friends of my college friends who were were still pretty tight today, uh, 20 some years later. And our, our friendship was founded basically in service to others. And whether that was at the Catholic worker feeding people mm -hmm. who were on the line, uh, it, literally in need of food, or teenagers who were spiritually hungry and in need of community and building up of that community. So I had some experience on that end. So when I flew to Chicago, where my friend Ryan Hall mm -hmm. was being recruited by the current, that, that particular uh, vocation director, Brother Corey Brost, um, <laughs> and was invited to help out in summer service programs with teenagers. And Ryan invited me to fly to Chicago and we would drive back to Vegas to, um, uh, to get back to uh, the semester in college. Mm -hmm. And the car broke down at the airport, and I'm stuck for three days with Ryan with all these strange Viatorians at the <laughs> Province Center in Arlington Heights. I, I was just along for the ride, and okay, I'm stranded here with him. And my goodness, there, there's these guys together, and it's summertime, and they're wearing uh, like shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops, and some of them are drinking a beer, and they rented the uh, last year's movie, and it was one of those kind of like uh, young people today. It's in the in the genre of the Hangover. You know, one of those movies you would never want to watch with your parents. The Viatorians are watching this, <laughs> and it was bingo. I want to be a Viatorian. No, just kidding. Uh, but it, what hit me was, wow, these guys are regular people. They're normal people. They laugh at the stupid jokes that me and my friends laugh at. 
Um, but it wasn't so much at that point that I said, ah, I want to do this. It was, it, but something in me, um, there was something that, that I took note. So then later on in that, uh, in that fall, when I'm walking from one class to another at UNLV, walking across the softball field, and by this time I have a cell phone in 1999, mm. and the phone rings, and in those days you actually answered it because it was such a novel thing that, uh -huh. that a phone was ringing, and oh, they're calling me, hello. Hey, this is Brother Corey, remember me? Yeah, how the heck did he get my number? <laughs> Yeah, your friends were telling me you might be interested in became, becoming a brother or a priest. And in my mouth, I said, oh, <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, those jerks. <laughs> um, but something deep in my heart, I, I can't describe it other than a grunt, almost like a, huh. And I went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that was the moment when the pieces of working with the Viatorian ministry in the parish, uh, working with my friends who all went to a Viatorian high school. I didn't. I went to a public school. And their experiences and stories and it, of the Viatorians, it all kind of linked together. And that, that piece in me that went, oh, no, was, I think my life, I think there's something in my life that the trajectory has just changed and something that's totally... Uh, different from what I had planned. I don't even really know what I had planned other yeah. than graduating college. And it took me five years to do that, but I was a super senior and that's okay. What I found out years later, it was my friend Pauline at the request of brother Corey Brost, when he asked her, do you know any young men who would be a good fit with us? And she said, yeah, John, here's his number. <laughs> jerk. Uh, but I, uh, I'm so glad she sold me out, so yeah. to speak, because she saw something in me and knew me well. She also had known the Viatorians well, and it, it takes somebody from the outside to verify and validate what's going on in an individual. From that moment forward in discernment, and it took me a while to do that, but uh, it was the ministry. It was the relaxed atmosphere of the Viatorian brothers and priests. Um, and it was the sense of this common life and this common goal that solidified it for mm. me. But all weave throughout that is this wacky sense of humor we have. <laughs> and it just fits. <laughs> Be careful how you broadcast that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting because I, I, you know, I knew you only at that point when you were beginning to think about it and come in, but I never knew exactly what was the inspiration behind it. Yeah, and I think looking back a lot further in my life, I would say even probably by the time I was in high school, uh, early high school, I knew that I wanted to help people. I knew that I wasn't into life for the money. I didn't know how that was going to manifest. Yeah. So when I went to college, I said, well, okay, I like I like to help people. I know I'm pretty good at working with young people. So, well, let's just do elementary education. There wasn't a whole lot of discernment in it, but there was something deep down in there that I was listening to. And by the time mid-college comes through, the, the pieces finally started coming together. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> the pattern of how that works is very interesting. Uh, I went through a Viatorian high school, and so I really liked a lot of those teachers particularly the young brothers who were fun. <laughs> you know, they, they horsed around with the kids. They enjoyed the kids. Tom Langenfeld was a young brother, and he spent his lunch hour sitting at our table having conversation with us. So that kind of connection, that kind of relationship was there. But my family, uh, I had an uncle who was a diocesan priest and an aunt who was a nun, and they would come home and visit and all that kind of thing. Um, and so there was a culture that was there already in my family. And um, I sort of thought and felt inclined in that direction. But all my peers in high school, oh, Render, you're going to be a priest. Oh, we know you're going to be a priest. You're probably going to go to those Viatorians. And then the vocation director would come and get on the school PA and call the names of the people he'd like to see down in the office. And you just crawled under your desk and hoped to God he didn't call you, you know. I should try that tactic. <laughs>
so eventually he um, he did call me and I went down and talked to him, but he brought me up to Arlington uh, to what was then the novitiate. And my uh, one of my best friends junior year had left after junior year and joined the Viatorians. So I, I had a great weekend with him and with his peers at the, at the province center. Came home having had a good experience, but not necessarily seeing myself doing that. And I'm riding the bus home from school one day and the bus turns this corner by the hospital and I'm thinking there and all of a sudden you talked about a grunt and I jumped in my seat and said, I'm going to join the Viatorians. Wow. Where did that come from? Exactly. Exactly. You know, I wasn't knocked off my horse. It wasn't one of those kind of things, but it was a physical, yeah. a physical jarring. And it was perfectly, perfectly comfortable and calm. You know, there were days later and years later that I thought, am I, should I really be doing this or not? You know, but, but it was that kind of experience. It's, it, it, how did you arrive at that? I don't know. You know, how do all the pieces yeah. fall together? Like your story? I don't know. But, but I think it's, it's an interesting pattern to, to remind you of when you're talking to other people, young people about, what am I going to do with my life? How am I going to discern what I'm doing with my, whatever it's religious vocation or career. You know, I talked to lots of young people about career. What are you going to do? How many kids go off to college with some vague notion? How many times they're going to change their major three times in college, you know, and still not know what they're going to do. And, and so it's, it's that kind of being willing to walk the, the natural path and kind of let the pieces fall into it that that i think helps so there's a little bit more to the story of that that uh, uh that grunt from within uh after Corey asked or said that to me i uh, he invited me to go to a vocation come and see weekend i was like fine let me kill this thing that's inside <laughs> of me we'll go to this vocation retreat and we'll, we'll it'll be we'll be done with it and i go there and it went from a huh to a huh i was like <laughs> no stop that and then I was invited in the summer to help out too on a, a retreat for young people and service immersion kind of experience. And it basically turned into, you better check this out. Uh, and I would describe it as, uh, you know, like maybe you leave home one day and you're going to the office or you're, you're going to school and you're out and about and you have that question, did I leave the garage door open? Or uh, is the front door unlocked or did I leave the oven on? One of those nagging yeah. questions that there's only two ways to find out. Number one is, hmm, maybe I better drive back and take a look and, and ensure it. So I need to go there myself to see it. Or I call somebody to verify. Well, I think that's part of discernment too. Yeah. I, I think this calling or this God's invitation piece is the garage door hanging open. And I probably need to check it out myself, but I also need to lean on others. Mm -hmm. Do you have others or have you had others to, uh, to do that verification for you or to bounce things off of? Not so much then at that time. I mean, my peers all had it in their mind that I was going to be a priest. Yeah. You know? and that, <laughs> that, they had all ready. They knew it know. before you did. They knew long before I did, but it was sort of a mocking, teasing, you know, put down kind of thing. Um, but I think later in my life, um, that's a good question because I think there are points along the line where you're, you're really tested. Is this the right path? Is this the right way to go? There was a point in my seminary years when I really was really questioning whether I should continue. And um, my dad happened to come to town that night. We were in Washington, D.C. and he came out on a business meeting, but we went to dinner and I kind of confided in him that I was having these doubts. And contrary to his nature, he didn't give me a lecture, <laughs> which is what he would normally have done. He began to tell me about what it was like for him when he was my age and he was thinking about marrying my mom. Hmm. And it was fascinating. He had never let me into that side of his life at all. Uh, and all my doubts went away. And I continued on. Uh, and then many years later, I think, um, after I had finished in leadership with the community, um, I went away for a sabbatical year. I had been already now in religious life for 25 years. And 
the question was, okay, you've given 25 years. Is this going to be your whole life? Mm. Or is there something else you ought to be exploring? And so I went through a whole nother process of researching that again in my soul uh, and with the help of, of other people. I, I find it interesting that your vocation, especially with your talk with your father or your father's talk with you, I should say, yeah. uh, was verified through somebody who had a vocation of marriage. Yeah. Is there a, a correlation between marriage and people who are in religious life? Oh, I think so all the time. I think so all the time. You know, I became a father to kids at St. Vider High School for years and got Father's Day cards from kids, you know, you know, for whatever role I played in their lives, whatever time I spent with them. Um, and so that parent piece and children, and then I did their weddings and then I baptized their babies and I've done all that kind of stuff and walked that whole piece with them. I, I could see those dynamics, uh, the relational, not certainly not the same kind of intimacy from marriage, but the relationships of friendships that develop either within community or with other people because you are who you are as a religious. You bring something to that relationship that is different than they have with other people. And that sharing of intimacy becomes a really life-giving part of part of your your vocation one of my best friends was a teacher at St. Vider High School but was not Catholic was married to a Catholic had all his kids baptized raised his kids Catholic went to every first communion every confirmation did all that kind of stuff and one day riding in the car he said to me okay what do I have to do to become a Catholic <laughs> and we did the RCIA on the second half of the trip <laughs> <laughs> and he made his profession of faith when we got back to St. Thomas More. <laughs> and he gave it to his wife as a gift on her birthday. Wow. The certificate that he had become a Catholic, you know. So it's, it's all of those. It wasn't because of who I was personally, but the fact that I happened to be representing the church and Catholicism and all that kind of stuff. But it also been very part of his life that the two came together. And I was the vehicle for him then joining the community of the church. So it's interesting that's a faith and a discernment in, but it's on the road. Yeah. It, it was literally on the road. Literally. My story was a car that was broken down. <laughs> uh, Viator means on the way. Yeah. Uh, just, just kind of a unique little. Good for you. Putting yeah. all that together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about in, what does it mean for you? to be a, a religious man in community. Mm. What, what is community for you? Uh, what do people in community experience of one another? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've said to people, um, I have, from the day I entered the novitiate, I felt like I belonged. Um, and everything, including some of the hard pieces along the way, I never lost that sense of it. Um, I felt received, accepted, welcomed, affirmed, um, given responsibility, uh, um, earned the confidence of people, that kind of thing from, from early on. Um, and so blending in and becoming part of this community and then playing roles in all kinds of different ways within the community. Uh, it is my family. It is my family. You know, um, I said that to a religious woman today who's talking about old age and what's happening to her in her old age. And, and we both said, you know, we understand that we've made a choice. And our choice is to be in community for the rest of our lives, not to depend upon our biological relatives to take care of us. That's not part of it. We're, we're, we've made this thing. So community is my family. Community is my base, my, I don't know what else to call it, my home. And, you know, it doesn't mean that it's always perfect or that there's all people that are easy to get along with. Only when you and I live together. But, yeah, right. But, but um, they aren't in families either. Right. You know, 
when young people say to me something, oh, I really I have to be married. You know, I really want marriage in the family. And I say to him, do you know what the divorce rate is? You know, think about that before you get married. It isn't all this ideal, wonderful thing, you know. It's beautiful when it's good, but it's painful when it's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing can be said about religious life. It's, it's wonderful if it's good for you and if it fits. And if you're feeling that sense of connectedness and belongingness, um, but if it, it can be painful for people who don't fit well and who've gotten into it for the wrong reasons. Or even other people's expectations. Yeah, all of that kind of thing. Yeah. The people we've lived with in community, the people that form that, that home, and in religious life, at least from my perspective, is there's always somebody to look, somebody to look up to or somebody who's lived a long life to... Uh, walk with. And I think particularly like for me in my novitiate, there was Father Tremonti who was 92 years old. He was a character. Yeah, he was a different person, but he represented a whole history of the community. Uh, he would want to be in community with us sitting on the patio. Uh, when Moses and I were novices, along with Brother Dale Barth, we'd be out on the patio and Father Tremonti would come out and sit down and just want to be with us. We'd be at dinner together with them. Sometimes it was difficult for him to move or, you know, we needed to, he needed to go to the doctor. So one of us would bring him there. But there was a sense of, we're in this together. Uh, there's a sense of care. And he would always, he had these big bushy eyebrows and he would wink and give me advice during the, that, that wink said, here's what you should do, brother. What are your experiences of maybe generational wisdom in the community? I, I think that's, it's a rich, rich resource. From the very beginning, religious life is always intergenerational and you're always engaged with or involved with people of varying ages, some of whom become mentors to you, some of whom can become challenges in some ways, but there are always people who have walked the path ahead of you from whom you can learn, from whom uh, you, can, you can observe and watch and benefit from their gifts and their, their, their inspiration. As you advance in, in the generations, you, you take on a different kind of appreciation for, oh, not just the elders, but even the younger ones who are doing something different than you never thought of doing when you were young. And that inspires you. You know, I think of Michael and Corey and that whole piece, you know. With the Vider House of With the Vider House and Hospitality. They brought that home to dinner every night. And that was the most stimulating piece for me as a pastor, you know, a worn out pastor. <laughs> <laughs> who'd been a pastor for 27 years, you know, and was, had seen it all and done it all. But here's the young guys in our community who are doing something that's really exciting. And really new and different and in invigorating and revitalizing me uh, and so I think that that mutuality happens all the way along the line mm -hmm. and it's very different for each each of us it's different people uh, people that different people come to us and I remember we asked that question one time who are the giants who are the giants in the community for you and every person named somebody different and so it, and there and the reasons why were fascinating so it's it's yeah I think that's really a rich it's a rich part of it. It's there in families, but you, you're not exposed to it every day. Right. You know, your grandparents are there and you see them a couple times a year, or maybe your grandma lives in the house with you, but it's not the same. Here, it's, it's morning, noon, and night. You're intergenerational in everything you do in every facet of your life. And that's a difficulty sometimes, but more often it's a richness. Just a, an anecdote. When I was a novice, uh -huh. uh, Brother Dale Barth and Moses and I would drive from Kankakee, Illinois, up to Arlington Heights, which would be about an hour and a half. Uh, but whenever we come to a stop, Dale would put up his hand and say, whoa, Emma. And okay, he did that every single time. Finally, I go, Dale, what are you doing? And he said, well, Father McCormick, when, we, when I was in the novitiate, I think you had uh, similar experience with Father McCormick. 
who was a hundred or a hundred and two or something. He was hundred like the year I was a novice. Yeah, so Dale would have been a hundred and two. They'd wheel him into the chapel in the choir loft, and when they would stop, he would say, "Whoa, Emma." Well, Emma was the novitiate horse uh, in <laughs> Bourbonnais way back when. Uh, so I thought it was kind of an interesting passing on of tradition yeah. from 1870-something something, all the way through somebody who joined in 1960 to somebody who joined in the early 2000s. So right. Emma was still present. <laughs> I don't know where Emma ended up, but uh, the, the tradition is there. Right. And there are those kind of traditions. I mean, that's a humorous one, but there are other kinds of traditions that, that are lasting and you can kind of see it in the legacy. You know, um, I had the good fortune of two of the parishes where I had went in as pastor. I had followed a 60, 70 year history 80 years in one case, 120 years in another case. You know, parish, yeah. so, so all the legacy and the people knew those other Viatorians who preceded me. And they would talk about some of them and they would tell me what they, you know, they remember Father Sullivan because he knew everybody's name. He could, by con communion, he could call you by name when you came wow. to communion, you know, that kind of thing. And they remembered those pieces. Um, and so it, 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 it kind of, um, it, it, it gave me a sense of pride. It, and I've had a similar experience with that, but in a more modern day sort of uh, context, we had a, the day for consecrated life in Chicago where in the Archdiocese of Chicago, there were like six or 700 religious men and women who gathered at this big parish. And we went from the conference time and we were going over to mass. And there was the sister who said to me, I, I was dressed in regular clothes. She says, oh, what community are you with? And I said, oh, I'm a Viatorian. She goes, oh, you're the community that works with the immigrants. Good job. Now, at that point in time, if somebody asked me, who do people identify the Viatorians as? I would have said, you know, people who work in schools and parishes and have a focus on young people. But it was exactly the Corey Bros and the Michael Goshes and the Tom Longs and a lot of our men at that time who were really pushing for justice for the for the immigrants and so the legacy comes yeah. out in different ways yeah. in modern times mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. i think that's true for me uh coming into the community joining the community in 2001 as a pre-novice at that point in time we had five lay associates um and so i joined the community at a time my whole memory of the community is a community that has associates. Um, so that's my whole context coming in. However, I've been able to, to see it develop um, as my discernment, as my uh, path uh, becoming a Viatorian was emerging, so was the life of the associate. And I kind of talk about it as we grew into this together. together. Um, so my frame of reference is only with association and it's been a positive experience and mine has been different obviously because there were no associates for a good long part of my history of the community but what what it, and the genesis of it for me was much more about our experience of working in schools because very quickly working in schools that the professed religious became the minority and the lay faculty and lay administrators became the dominant pool of people who were, who were serving in that ministry. And so quickly, um, it became not just the school that belongs to the professed religious, it was the school, the faculty school. And so picking up somehow in helping, helping prepare the lay faculty to get the mission of a Catholic school and to really take it into their blood. So it became cellular in them. And they became Viatorians acting in the classrooms and in the retreats and that kind of stuff was part of my responsibility um, as, the, as the president and as the vice before that, the assistant or whatever title was at that time. That became part of my whole piece of responsibility in those years. So that by the time that was happening in all of our schools in the early 70s. Our annual gathering was a gathering not of the, only of the professed religious, but of all the people who were our partners 
in mission and in ministry. And so people from St. Bider High School, people from our parishes, people from McNamara, people from all those parishes were coming to the annual assembly in the summertime. And we were setting goals and visions and doing that kind of stuff and planning together. So it was a transformation happening within the natural life, the province, that when it came time to move to association, the groundwork was already there for most of us. It became more difficult for some people to begin to understand that membership in the community could be broadened beyond just professed that there could be other ways of being members of a, of a community and associate members, uh, you know, in the early stages, they were the youngsters mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But after 25, 30 years, you know, they've become kind of the leadership of many ways of the Viatorian community. And some of that has been deliberate, but I see it as the, as the future, no matter how many or few professed religious there will be, the far greater expansion of the Viatorian charism and mission will be carried by lay men and women into a variety of places in the world that may or may not be Viatorian institutions. You know, that they will, they will be doing it in all kinds of ways and carrying it out further. And that's the real gift, I think, of association. It's not just to have partners in the community. It's to have a whole new body of people who have assimilated Viatorian charism, Viatorianism, mm -hmm. and who are now flesh and blood Viatorians out there in whatever they're doing and are carrying out that same mission in a variety of ways. And that's a model for the church mm -hmm. that, that I think really captures the spirit of um, the church in the world. You know, it's, I used to be offended when people would say the role of the priests is to take is to feed the church internally but the role of the people is to take the church out into the world and i sort of resented that for a long time mm -hmm. thinking i'm part of the world you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm you know i'm i'm part of the world too but but i understand from from a pastor perspective that that the body of the church you gather and that you nurture and care for and shepherd you are doing that to, to, to feed them and to enable them to be able to go out and do that in their families and in their jobs and in the world and so forth. And it's that linkage that's important. And I think for the associates, that's really an important future for us. You and I have had these conversations though about other ways besides association mm -hmm. for the, the Viatorianism <laughs> to be absorbed and taken out. And I, you know, I think Charlie Bolzer and people at St. Vider High School call those kids Viatorians years ago. And they call themselves They Viatorians. call themselves Viatorians and, and they get it yeah. and they understand it. Now, some of that dissolves as they move on and move out of the school and other places in their life, but they never forget that, that history, that place where they were nurtured in that. And you'll see it in the alumni oh, yeah. who come back faithfully and talk about that. Well, two of our pre-associates right now from Arlington Heights, they both happen to have the first name of Jason, <laughs> uh, but they're, they're also uh, working at the school and they also feel a deep connection to, to who we are. And not only admiring the work we do, but have realized that they themselves have been doing, yeah. doing the work, Our but... Work see the value of being in community right. and doing the work right. in a unique way that, right. that is from a lay perspective. Yeah. And I've said that in some of these recent regional meetings, you know, that that circle of people is broadening. And I think the, the experience of Vider House hospitality, which depends upon volunteer people who come in and enable those young people to find all kinds of things, whether it's just driving them to the bus mm -hmm. or, you know, tutoring them or whatever they're doing, they have picked up on the mission and they are participating in it. And some of them are not Christian necessarily, but they admire the mission mm -hmm. and they feel they belong. It belongs to them. They're a part of it and it inspires them. Uh, and so that's the perfect, it's like a lab, <laughs> you know, a little <laughs> laboratory going on over there, you know, where we're, we're, 
we're nurturing a whole new spirit of what it might be to embrace Viatorianism and, and to carry that forward in, into another rank, another circles of people and circles of belonging, connection, and all that kind of thing. So I think it's kind of exciting. Well, you know, one, of the, one of the places where the dynamic interaction among uh, Viatorian associates and vowed religious happens. Uh, we've done it 10 times now. We're getting ready to do our 11th one in St. George, Illinois, out in the cornfields, but the Viatorian Youth Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, for me, it's one of the most energizing times of ministry, partly because there's young people there, uh, obviously, with it, that's the focus is youth, yeah. but having 10, 12, 15 Viatorians working together on a common project, being able to laugh with one another, uh, be ourselves in front of all these young people who maybe come from a small parish out in the cornfields or might come from a big suburban school or may come from an urban parish setting on the busy corner of Eastern and Flamingo in Las Vegas, come together and experience this dynamic Viatorian charism happening through people. And then these young people leave the VYC going, there's something there. There's mm -hmm. community, exactly what we were mm -hmm. talking about at the beginning. These are the Viatorians build up this community and we're a part of it and we want to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And so there's something between young people who have been at the Youth Congress or young people who have graduated from our schools or young people who've been part of youth ministry in our parishes, there's something there that they and can identify as, I, I want that, or there's a piece of that that's a part of me um, that I want to live out my life doing. Now, whether or not they become an associate yeah. or whether or not they become a, a vowed religious, that's, that'd be great. But the bigger goal is you're on fire, send it out into the world. That's and right. uh, it's, that's right. it's exciting to see that. Yeah. And I don't think that's possible without associates because they bring another piece of- And they bring the witness of ordinary people. Yes. You know, not celibate people, not, not those guys, but there's women, there's widows, there's young women, there's all kinds of people who are modeling Viatorianism and living it and showing how to do that in other ways. I, I, I just, I see that it's like waves, you know, and, and that kind of thing. There's the first wave is, was the professed and, and that sense of religious life and who carried the mission for a hundred and some years, but now it's been expanded, you know, and then it's going to go bigger to another wave and another circle of, 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 of people who can carry that. And I find that fascinating and, and um, kind of exciting for possibilities in the future. Yeah, I look at it as concentric circles, yeah. almost like a, a pebble thrown into a, a pond, yeah, right? that kind of thing. And uh, and I think all the professed, the the associates, and the people uh, who identify in Viatorianism or whatever the heck we call yeah. it, is a dynamic that feeds off of one off of the other and fuels one another. For me, it doesn't matter how many are in which group. What does matter is that we're in it together, we're right. working together, we're proclaiming Jesus in the world. Well, and that's just exactly where I was going as my final <laughs> comment was, isn't that the perfect model that Jesus set for us? Yeah. He was the center. He gathered tw 10, 12. Then there was another circle. Mm -hmm. Then there was another circle. And pretty soon it was the whole, the whole world. And he deliberately did it that way. Mm -hmm to teach us that that's exactly how it has to happen. What is the, uh, the common spiritual piece among all of the, the oh. members of the, the concentric circle or what are, what are the fruits that each one brings? Part of what we say within the Viatorian community is that um, one of the pillars of, that holds us together as a Viatorian community is our spirituality but it's not the spirituality of the professed. It's the, it's the spirit, shared spirituality of the lay and the professed somehow benefiting and mutually enriching each other's spirituality. And that's a piece that we have not worked on as hard yet uh, to, to really develop and, and kind of put a language to that yet. 
you know, and then you get the next circle and what their spirituality will be. Uh, you know, I, I, I look at some of the, a person like Jason, we mentioned him, you know, his whole, the things that he's been involved in, the things that he's excited about, that kind of peace that feeds and nourishes and expresses his spirit are not just the school stuff. There are other the world issues and other immigration population and issues and immigration and environment and all that. And other young people who are coming in will have others of those kind of fires mm -hmm. that will feed the spirituality of the whole group. So it's, it's, it's hard to name a kind of... What, what's interesting to me about the, your comment on the, the lay associates and the religious knitting together sort of in the spiritualities and how they're mutual and feed one another is very much from the roots of our congregation with Father Kerbs when he was in Lyon and it was illegal for uh, mass to even happen. And when he was a child, the, uh, the women of the families would be catechists and really teach people how to pray, teach people how to be church. And that was his experience of learning how to be church. Mm. And it's fascinating that that is kind of the hallmark. Maybe we aren't able to have a language to identify it yet, but that's apparent in how we are as a, as a spiritual body, as uh, committed Viatorians, whether right. lay or yeah. with CSV after our name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We understand yeah. mission mm -hmm. and we kind of are working pretty well together in terms of community, but it's the spirituality component, that pillar of the Viatorian community that still needs more attention. Mm -hmm. And it's not just all coming together to pray together or to say to attend mass together, you know, but what we find in our experiences of the assemblies, when the associates have prepared the prayer, it's really it's powerful. good. <laughs> and, and it feeds all of us. Uh, and the, the professed are kind of humbled by the creativity and the imagination and the depth of what these women, happens to be women, are, are putting into this prayer mm -hmm. and creating this prayer. And drawing out of us that same thing so i think that's where the the mutuality you know is 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 going to bear fruit yet to be determined it, it, a phrase that comes out of uh, that for me is from luke with the road to emmaus weren't our hearts burning within us and uh, when we do have those prayer experiences i it, when we're walking down the hallway to the meeting room yeah. afterwards many times we're like Wow, that was beautiful. Weren't yeah. our hearts burning during that? Yeah, where did you get all that? Where right. Did, yeah, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's a real gift. And maybe maybe it is like what you said with uh, the concentric circles of mirroring Jesus and the apostles in the 50 and beyond. It's that interaction happens and that's what causes our hearts to burn and maybe grabs attention of uh, these other young people who might be asking, where's God inviting me? Yeah. That's all for this installment of Roundtables on the Way. We'd like to thank Father Patrick Render for joining Brother John for this roundtable. We often hear such great affirmations and joyful stories from all the people who Father Pat has served over the years and are glad to capture some of his reflections here in this episode. Viatorian Voices Conversations on the Way is a production of Viatorian Vocation Ministry. The Viatorians are professed brothers and priests together with lay associates who proclaim Jesus Christ and his gospel and raise communities where faith is lived, deepened, and celebrated. In the footsteps of Venerable Louis Kerbs and under the patronage of St. Bider, we strive to do everything well so that through us, Jesus may be adored and loved. To learn more about our community, visit viatorians.com or follow us on social media at Viatorian USA. Those seeking support and accompaniment in exploring God's invitation for them are invited to reach out to Vocation Ministry. Send us a DM on social media or email vocations at viatorians.com to start a conversation. On behalf of Brother John and the Viatorian community, I'm Dan Masterton. St. Vider, pray for us. Adored and loved be Jesus. Mm -hmm.